hello hi so it is day 16 of veda and i am back with another um with a continuation of the creepy kevin story that i started in the last video and so first i just want to take a moment to acknowledge new hair who this um this is my uh, process when i if i get a wig and it's like long it's always a cutting process i am not like one of those influencers who are like you know time lapse snip 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 perfection not the kid this process so this is phase one hello um so you know i'm sure this this lady will show up again i don't have a name for her we can call her red right now that's what we're gonna do but nonetheless i didn't want to not mention her since obviously it's a different hairs but i want to go back into the story um because we stopped on a bit of a cliffhanger where the room where tom was in um the doorknob came off um i can't tell if this is the bedroom or if it's the um yeah it's the bedroom <laughs> so you know we, we ended with him being like oh come on and then the doorknob comes off so i wanted to leave it on a cliffhanger but I wanted to, didn't want to leave you hanging too long so that we can continue on with the next part of the story. And so um, there we go. So I'm using this tool. So just as an F a note, um, if you watched the last video and I had like a little screen capture of it, I'm using this tool called Screencast-O-Matic to record myself going through that so you can see the pictures and the tweets and there's also videos and so i just wanted to make sure i had the audio and i do it's a um it's a pretty cool tool side note i use it for work purposes like i've used it to create workshops i've used it for um whenever i like want to show show my team something and like explain for them how to do something i will um sometimes just pull this up and like really quickly walk through it and send them a video especially if we don't have time to like hop on a uber conference and i can tell that they will prop they'll be able to understand what i'm asking them to do if they knew how to do the thing i was asking them and so sometimes i'll say hey do you know how to change a setting here like it's a very specific visual thing and they'll be like no i'm not sure how to do that i'll be like okay cool i'll send you a video and so then i'll do a quick video being like all right so here you go you go here click here click here so it's a really cool tool for that i have a premium version where i think it's like 20 dollars a year or something then then there's like a, a another paid version that's less premium which is like 12 dollars a year so it's very affordable um but nonetheless just a quick tip so that's what i'm using um of course if i find another solution i'll switch but for now this seems to be working okay so let's just jump right into the story so we stop well first let me hit record um on my videos capture okay so we stop with tom realizing that the um excuse me i'm scared on my lip gloss realizing that the knob on the door in the bedroom has now come off so let's go to the next tweet i realize it's been eight hours just wanted to let you all know i'm okay the story didn't end there but my phone battery dot did and the charger was in my car outside so you know physically impossible to retrieve so this is what happened next before my phone died i spoke to my wife and told her i was sure i'd be fine then I took a video of the bedroom ceiling. I'm lying in bed and the ceiling is making this sound. And then my phone dies. So he has a video. So here's the video. Let's um, pull this up. And so if you couldn't hear it, um, cause it's not super loud, there's like knocking noises happening on the ceiling. So, you know, first of all, this ceiling looks creepy. Like it's definitely, and it's kind of, it basically 
supports what I said in the last video, um, where I was like, this cottage, this cottage, this cabin looks older. So it's not like an extremely modern, up to date cabin. It's you know probably older so it ha so like it looks more creepy just because of the age and you know it looks decently kept up like they didn't just let it you know become dilapidated so it's definitely livable inhabitable it's inhabitable but it still has its quirks and tweaks because it's older um so the, the ceiling looks a little creepy um and so it's making kind of a knocking noise on the ceiling now this is creepy because he knows he's there alone he knows there's nobody there with him. He also knows that even if someone was there with them, the odds of them being on the roof at, um, you know, because I think this is the video he took before his phone died. So early on, he said it was 5.30 a.m. So by now, it's probably, let's see if I can scroll up. Yeah, it doesn't, he doesn't, he's telling the story, so it doesn't say, but this is probably, you know, maybe an hour or so after maybe 30 45 minutes how, you know it's a, a time a decent time frame but it's not like the next day and it's knocking on the roof so it's not like it's just creepy just <laughs> to explain the creepiness it's creepy um he hasn't left and like someone has come and maybe gotten on the roof like it's creepy um, and it's probably kind of dawn-ish, I'm presuming, if it, if it was 5.30 initially, where it was dark, might be, maybe the sun is, is, maybe if it hasn't come up all the way, it might be a little less dark outside, but it's still creepy, he's in bed. Back to the story. I'm lying there, staring at the ceiling, which is apparently counting down to my death, when the wind chimes rattle across the porch floor, and then something very big runs across the roof. I'm assuming it was a large possum and definitely not a hell beast. Maybe a hell beast. Eventually exhausted, I close my eyes and I wake up to a bang. I'm instantly more awake than I've ever been before. I'm on my feet, but I don't remember getting out of bed. Someone is bashing on the front door. I'm standing there motionless in my underwear, ignoring the still ticking ceiling, trying not to breathe too loud, trying not to make a single sound. I am a petrified ninja. Pause for that's not appropriate, but nonetheless, that's what he said. So. Um, but that's not appropriate. I want to acknowledge that that's not appropriate. Um, it's not appropriate things to say. Um, back to the story. The bashing starts again. Without stopping to do anything sensible that will make me feel less vulnerable, like put on pants, I walk slowly to the front door and there's a large shadow on the Venetian blinds. A very big person is standing on the porch of this remote cabin. The bashing starts again. I eloquently call out, what? The bashing stops. I see the guy shift and he calls out, package. After the night I've had, I, there's no way I'm opening the door to a stranger delivering a package to a remote cabin. Also, I'm in my underwear. Also, I can't open the door because I frantically locked it during the night and I have no idea what I've done with the keys. He calls out, can you sign for it? After a way too long and awkward pause, I say, um, no. Helpfully, I call out, just leave it, mate. I can't really just leave it. So sidebar, again, a quick reminder, he's in Australia, he's Australian. So they say things like mate, excuse me, there's an eyelash in my eye. So <laughs> they see things like mate. Back to the story. So what are we thinking? Still beating heart or trapped soul? And here's a picture of the package. So it's like, <laughs> hey, well, so there's a couple of things in this picture that I want to point out. One, there's a package. 
Um, and it's not a huge package. It's a decently sized package though. It's not super small. It's like a regular kind of square package. Um, but the wind chimes are on the floor next to the chair, which means they shouldn't be chiming because wind chimes need wind to chime. And if they're on the floor or otherwise collapsed or bound or not waving, then why are they chiming? Nonetheless, back to the story. So then this is when he starts to engage with the audience. Why are so many of you asking me what's in the mysterious package? Why the hell would I open it? You think I'm gonna bring it inside? No, it stays outside with the wind chimes. Okay, I brought it inside, but I'm keeping it inside the fire safety cage. And so here's a picture of the fire safety cage. I want to show you this because it makes sense as we start to see later. So here's the fire safety page. Just take a look at the fire safety cage. What what do you what does it look like? So there's a package sitting on top of the fire um, the fireplace, um, but is it me or does it look like some type of a face is in the fireplace? Just throwing it out there, and here's why. Back to the story. What? What bear? So he's replying to someone who replied to him and said, why is there a bear in the fireplace? And so he says, what? What bear? And then the person's, another person says, there's definitely a face in that fireplace. Scared face emoji. And he says, what? So then he says, there's nothing in the fireplace, people. I'm here for four more nights. Don't do this to me. So I'm just gonna open up this picture. So look at this picture for a second. Take a moment, take it in. It looks like a fireplace. There is no face in the fireplace. But let's just go back, because <laughs> I just want us to go back to the first picture that he took and let's make that one big again. And does that look like now, it is a slightly different angle, but why even at a slightly different angle, why is there, it looks like a face. Like, does it, in the comments, tell me, does it look like a face? It looks like a face to me. Nonetheless, it looks like a face, so. This is also why live tweeting things that are creepy is both good and bad because the things that you might have noticed um, after the fact, like in post telling the story, you might notice in real time because other people are involved. So they're kind of paying attention and they can pay attention way more closely and deeply because they're not in the cabin with you. So they're not freaked out. They're just watching um, like on TV. So again, here's the other picture. There's no face. So, all right, moving on with the story. Okay. Yes, I see the bear thing in the fireplace. I assume it was a weird reflection and it looks cuddly, so I'm not worried. But to the people who pointed out what looks like a person standing in the window of the cabin in the photo I took last night, you are not helping. So I didn't even notice this because I had kind of scrolled and saw some of this before I paused to walk through it with you guys. But so here is the picture bigger here is another close-up shot here is another close-up shot that looks like a figure it does look like a figure i don't recall if i saw that previously but definitely when he, when he does this it looks like a figure so it's getting all right back to the story after seeing the definitely not a person in that last picture, I decided to check the other rooms in this place. Found this tiny chair in front of an old television with no reception. How fun. So here's the television and the chair. That does not look like a torture chamber at all. But, and I, and I will say this just for additional note. It's very interesting how he 
So it sounds like he got there really late and he basically was just like checking into the cabin. I'm getting here. I'm just going to go straight to bed because it's late and I'm tired. And so he hadn't even walked around the cabin to see like what else was in there, which I find hilarious. But creepy TV, you know, anyone who's ever seen Poltergeist or, or many horror movies, um, I'm trying to think of, there's some other ones. See, talk in the comments. There's other horror movies where there's like a TV screen and it goes blank. That's never a good sign. Poltergeist is one thing that pops to mind because I was traumatized by Poltergeist as a child, <laughs> but there's plenty of others. Back to the story. There's something running over the roof. I tried to get a video where you can hear the footsteps. Got this and said. Insert gif of Jake Peralta nervously saying, cool, cool, cool. So here's the video. I'll make it big so you can see it. So that's aggressive and it's a very audible, loud, audible, you know, like bang on the roof. Again, he's there alone. Why are things banging on the roof? Back to the story. Thought, for a bit of fun, I take my laptop and do a little writing in the tiny chair. And I seriously can't remember putting this there. So again, <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I'm chuckling because, like I said, I'm watching this. We're watching this together. And I'm chuckling because the box that was in the fire safety cage is now in the chair. There's no one else in the, in the cabin with him. But here we go. And you can see it. Back to the story. All totally normal. And here's the video make this big and play. And it's the box. So he's showing the box that I don't remember putting there is on the chair in front of the, on the small chair in front of the chair. Weird, odd, unsettling. Back to the story. Another video. It's really cool how many videos he has because it really like brings you into the story. So let's look at this video. To the story. Hey, sorry for the loud noise. Squish my toe with the tiny chair. I'm in bed now. I want to go to sleep, but something is on the roof. It sounds bigger than anything else I've heard on the roof up to now. So here's another video. It sounds like something is like tap dancing. Like <laughs> it's not just walking around, it's like doing a jig or something. It's really weird. So the date, just wanna go back. It was March 26th was the date for the last one. And then he doesn't post again until the next day. So of course people on Twitter are like, oh my God, Tom. So he says, hey, sorry to all the people asking if I'm alive, yes. I'm okay, just been writing in isolation all day. Thanks to the news sites checking in too. Nice to see my living nightmare has made Time Magazine. So this is hilarious um, because <laughs> there is an article about him in the cabin while he's still in the cabin. 
So it's good to hear though that he got some writing done because that was the whole point of him going to this colonial looking creepy kind of going cat. Back to the story. Oh, there's one thing to report from today, but it's almost not worth reporting because like, is the cabin even trying anymore? So there are two t bedside tables in my room. And seriously, I almost didn't bother sharing this because it's just so blatant. Try harder, cabin. Where's the subtlety? Anyway, I opened one and, whoops. So make this picture big. <laughs> it's a book that says, this house is haunted by John Boyne. I'm not sure who John Boyne is, um, but I will look him up and link to him in the below if he has a website or something. But this is a book that says his house is haunted, which is hilarious, um, which I get kind of, where's the subtlety? I'm not opening the other bedside table. To everyone telling me to open the other bedside table, you are the worst. Gah, fine. I'll open the other damn drawer. And he's responding to um, another person that says, listen to Ray. We need closure, Tom, even if it means your grisly death. This is why it's funny when you work in fiction or the, in this space and then you have friends who are like, we need to know what happened. Story is important. Hilarious. Okay. Thanks. This is just, this is so much worse. So much worse. And <laughs> the other book is Games to Play with Babies by Jackie Silberg, I think. It's kind of hard to see that. <laughs> Games to Play with Babies. That's creepy. The next one says, huh? And to the comment, why do you have three feet? And she has what? People, you need to stop this. I'm feeling weird enough. Which pick? And someone says, there are three shoes. How are there three shoes in the pick? So let's scroll back up and see. So there's, let's go to the first one. That's obviously two shoes. Yep, don't see three. Let's go to the next picture. Oh my goodness, there are three shoes. Yo, <laughs> that's crazy. Sorry, that's hilarious. That's crazy, there are three shoes. Why? Okay, <laughs> so, woo. And so he says, after we, with the, the three shoes, I have no explanation. He doesn't even really address it fully because it's probably freaking him out. So remember the wind chimes? I can hear them chiming again. The only problem is there's no wind and they're not even outside anymore. I bought them in and put them with the package on the old wooden dollhouse. So there's, so this cabin gets creepier and creepier, not even with each description of creepy things, but each description of what's in the cabin. Like the cabin just gets creepier and creepier. So here's a picture of the chimes and this creepy like in process dollhouse. And I also wanna point out this here. So I don't know what that is, but I do see something in, in the reflection of, I don't know if that's the glass, um, cause I don't know what time of the day it is. Oh, 10.55 AM. So it's night, but I don't know if that's like glass or if that's just like a picture or a mirror or what. But this is a creepy looking old school kind of dollhouse, which may be worth like a lot of money because it looks kind of vintage. But nonetheless, back to the story. The stuffed toy on the dollhouse isn't a bear. It's called a bilby, which is kind of an Australian native bunny. It's a marsupial. We give out chocolate ones at Easter. I wouldn't call it haunted. So he's responding to someone's comment where they say, what's with the tiny haunted bear in the top left of the image? Now, the person asked about what's in the top left of the image. Let's scroll back up. The bunny or the bilby is in the right of the image. So I'm gonna make this big again because what they're talking about is that, not 
that. But, you know, nonetheless, keep scrolling. The Bilby isn't glowing, it's just sitting on the dollhouse. And the response is, cool, 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 why is it glowing? <laughs> so they, other people are seeing this weird looking head in the, um, whatever that is in the background. And so then he says, what are you all talking about? And someone says, dude, not the Bilby, the bear in the top left of the pic. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see it outside the window, above the package and the chimes. Not cool. Yo, it's outside the window? Um, okay, let's make the pictures big again. So this is the window and it's outside of the window. <laughs> it's a glowing bear that looks like a teddy bear outside the window, but we know he's in Australia. So they have things like koalas that look like teddy bears, but are not. And so then he zooms in and you see what looks like a glowing teddy bear, which is creepy. It's more creepy than anything. Back to the story. It could be a fluke thing. It might've been a moth. There have been a lot of moths at the window tonight. So here's a video. I think he's really just trying to make himself feel better because this is creepy and unexplainable, but he takes a video of what I'm presuming are moths. Now, I'm gonna blow this up because you see the moth flying around and that does not look like that glowing bear thing. Uh, to me, it looks like a moth. Uh, most people can tell the difference between a moth and a bear face, like look. But you know what? He's in this cabin. He's trying to make himself feel better. Also, I'm looking at the times, but I'm forgetting. I'm on Eastern time. He's in Australia. So it's like, um, they're ahead. We're going to go a little bit further and then we'll stop <laughs> next. Um, <laughs> so I guess someone shared an article with him. Um, about tales of sinister and haunted and possessed t teddy bears from this um, website. And he says, thanks for that. Really helpful input. Let's go back up, sorry, really, which I find hilarious. Again, Twitter audience can be both helpful and not helpful at the same time. So he said, it's still, is it still there? Did you investigate is one of the comments. And he says, no. I didn't go outside and investigate the ghost pair from childhood's past. Why don't you go outside and investigate? And you know, I like Tom, because Tom is like, he's not with the nonsense. Why would I go outside and investigate a ghost bear? At night, for what? For what? And it's like, exactly Tom. And then he says an expletive, um, but not an expletive, because it's the symbols of expletive. And now there's a video there is legitimately something trying to come down the chimney. And here's a video of that something. haunting or a creepy person or an aggressive animal all of those are bad things he is out in the bush in Australia which sounds like he's out in a fairly secluded area of Australia so why are there things trying to get into his cabin 